God bless everyone. This is your boy, Apostle, Prophet, Eddie Tate, success, coach, mentor. We're just delighted to be here tonight with you once again as we engage in teaching the Word of God and bringing you a message. And I just believe tonight that God is doing some very awesome things. God bless you, Lady Shay. And I want you all to understand tonight as we are teaching the word. I want you, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And I believe tonight more so ever, we need the word that I'm teaching in reference to healing. Being made whole. I believe God wants to make us whole. Amen. You know, all of us have areas where we might have been wounded, might have been hurt. All have areas. And there's areas we have grown and come to be dysfunctional in in some areas. You know, we don't have it all together. All of us don't. We don't have it all together. We're working on it. And I want you to understand, but it's God's will for you to be healed completely. Peace, shalom. Nothing broken, nothing need to be fixed. Do anybody hear me tonight? And I'm telling y'all, it's a pleasure as I come forth and many of you that will stay during the duration of teaching, quite naturally, I have a prophetic word for you. There's something that God will give me to give you. Amen. And so I want y'all to, you know, just kind of just hear what, what, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight as we continue our series on healing. Amen. So, we, why is it so important to be healed? Why is healing so important in this day and time? I believe it is. Because we didn't have a whole lot of stuff destined came in our lives. We've had people places and things that have came and targeted us to hurt us on purpose. And of course, it's the will of the devil. Do y'all hear me? I said, it's the will of the devil. Yes. So now, what I want you to understand is that God is moving in ways. So now let's get into the word of God tonight. And last night we were talking about dysfunctional, that being dysfunctional. And, there, and I told you that the word um, dysfunction, there's the word dysfunction, there is the word um, malfunction. And then, you know, there's function, dysfunction, and malfunction. Now, you you got to understand that, that um, if we talk about dysfunction, that's right in between function and malfunction. Function means things are going perfect and they're good. Shalom, peace, nothing broken, nothing need to be fixed. And that can be, you know. But then sometimes things happen to where we allow this ourselves to be hurt some kind of way. And some kind of way pain has a way of causing dysfunction. And if you let pain go on too long, what's going to happen is it's going to cause um, this. It's, it's going to cause dysfunction, and then after a while, it's going to cause malfunction. Why do you think people have nervous breakdowns? Because a lot of times they have what you call malfunction. They malfunction. They just break down. Y'all hear me? I said they just, they break down. I'm, I'm going to show you something here tonight. You, you, you going to have to understand that um, God is, is a God. God is whole and God don't need to be fixed. He's shalom. He's nothing broke with God. And in the beginning, Adam was like that. 
Jesus came to restore back unto us the state where Adam was in. Let's begin to explore the state where Adam was in. Adam, God put Adam in a garden where everything was there. He had access to everything. Even when he seen that he needed a mate, God put a mate in the garden with him. Took the rib out of him on his side and created him a mate, a helper. Y'all see that? So everything that Adam needed was there. Adam, that was nothing, you know. Adam didn't come dysfunctional until he obeyed, until he listened to the devil. Listen to, you know, they listened to the enemy. I want you to understand something, though. But God is bringing us back to that order of the kingdom. Y'all see that he's bringing us back to that kingdom mode. And oh, my God, when you are in kingdom mode, let me tell you something. I'm not saying that things are not going to come and going to hurt you. But God will put def uh, put a deflector on you. See, he'll put a deflector on you called the shield of faith. The Bible calls faith as a shield. So now, when in the days of Roman war, they had different aspects of the armor. And that's why Paul described the armor of God because Paul was familiar with the Roman um, you know, the Roman uh, culture and stuff like that. And that's why he used the armor God and, a, and a, he para, you know, just did a little parable with the, uh, with the Roman soldiers um, armor. One of the things he talked about was the shield of faith. Now, I'm going to show you something. The Bible says, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. And I'm going to show you how to guard your heart so that you are not, you know, I'm not saying you'll never get hurt or disappointed. But when things come to hurt you, if you guard your heart, now how are we going to guard our heart? And we're going to talk about the shield of faith because we're talking about defensiveness. The things that stop you from getting hurt. Areas that stop you from getting hurt. You know, the, the defense. Let's talk about some defense tonight. I remember playing basketball and playing sports and stuff. And one thing about it, you, you had to have defense. Defense stopped the other team from scoring. Defense. I wasn't a bad defensive player. And but offense calls you to score. But see, you can't have all, de all offense with no defense. It's like you can't take some teams, they can score points or points, but they can't stop the other team from scoring. You see that? So, or you got to be able to score some points sooner or later to win. But tonight we're talking about defensive mechanisms. And I, I want you to understand something tonight. Is that when you begin to understand defense mechanisms, Things that will stop the attacks of the devil, that will stop that. Because the enemy is out to attack you, to hurt you. He's not playing with you. He wants to hurt you. Amen. He wants to hurt you. The Bible said, for the devil is as a roaring lion. You know? And you know, he's walking and seeking who, can, who he can devour. Now, I'm going to go through some things because, see, think a, a lion's roar is intimidating. So, number one, the enemy wants to intimidate you with fear. But how do we stop these attacks? Okay. Now, this is how we stop. Now, as, as we discussed here, the Bible says to guard your heart. I'm trying to show you this. I got everything in the healing series. The Bible says to guard your heart. Now, this word guard means keep. Now, you got to keep your heart. But how are we going to do it? The Bible said that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind. What did Proverbs say? Be, you know, uh, 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 to guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. What do you think that causes issues is pain. 
Oh, yeah. Yes. That's what causes issues is pain. I want you to understand me something. I want you to understand tonight. That's what causes issues is pain. Now, we understand that the enemy wants to inflict pain on you. You know why? So that he could, so that you will not be balanced and you will not be whole. See, pain has a way of robbing you of life. It has a way of robbing you of mobility and and different things. Sometimes pain can just shut you down. But let me share this with you tonight. We have to keep our heart so that we do not allow issues. The wrong issues to come out of it. Because if the wrong thing get down in your heart, it's going to come out. Come on. What did Jesus say? When they was, you know, discussing about the Pharisees talking about, you know, your disciples eat with unwashed hands. And according to the law of the elders, they're not supposed to eat with unwashed hands. What did Jesus tell them? Jesus simply told them, it is not what goes into a man that they found is what come out. Now, somebody said, I thought you said, keep your heart. Don't let them get in it. Yeah. But he said, it's what comes out. See, the problem is. If something go in, it's going to come out. See, out of the heart. Let's deal with the heart, the human spirit, the soul. See, sometimes when we grew up, we collected issues. Yeah, we collected issues and things that caused us pain. Okay? Things happened to us. Okay? Now, understand, there's a part of your mind. The mind is composed of three areas really it is you know and I could classify the is the conscious the subconscious and the conscience now the conscience is basically your battle your data banks is where everything is stored up it's like your mind is like a computer where everything is stored up the subconscious is the automatic decision maker yep because the subconscious lives off habitual patterns. It does what is habit formed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we use phrases like, I know them by heart. I always say I learned my timetable in a weird way. I got beat with a board. By a man named Mr. Simmons. And some, some of my classmates know about Mr. Simmons. Mr. Simmons had a, a very uh, strange way of teaching. And back then you could whip your kids at school. He'd make us bend over and say them timetables. And if you miss one, you got to swat with that board. Now... What that did with me, it gave me an incentive. Cause I wasn't dumb. I, I, it gave me an incentive to go home and study them timetables, whichever ones you until I knew them backwards. Yes, sir. But you know what happened was, as I studied them, they got down into my subconscious. The subconscious state of mind is what you really wants to renew. And you renew the subconscious because you, in the conscience, you want to get information stored up so that the subconscious can make decisions based on what's stored up like a computer does. So you want to get your subconscious mind in a state to where it makes a decision based on the good things, the, the things that's stored in your conscience. That's what the Bible talks about renewing your mind. You have to basically reprogram your mind so that your subconscious could make decisions, good decisions. You can make using the, the information that's stored in your conscience. Amen. People always say, let your conscience be your God. In some cases, that ain't good because some people got the wrong stuff stored up in their conscience. Amen. Now, your, your conscience... Uh, it's not not conscience. 
uh, what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, the C-O-N-S-I-E-N-C, -E -E, conscience, anything like that. But your conscience, which is your awareness, what I'm talking about now, is where you are right now. Now, this is how you're going to change your subconscious state of mind. Yeah, we still talking about healing. I mean, the mind is one of the biggest things that need to be healed, need to be made whole. Paul, Paul told Timothy, said, God ain't giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. This word sound mind, sound means complete. And then one version says, he's given us a complete peaceful mind. He ain't given us a spirit of timidity, which is fear. But check this out. See, so what has to happen is you have to start to feed the subconscious through consciousness. That's all I was doing with them timetables. I was looking and I say them over and over and over and over until it got down in my subconscious like anything else that I wanted to be automatic. Now, I'm going to share something with y'all here. You know, I teach a lot of success principles. I teach a lot of of things, law, kingdom laws and everything. But the whole deal is if you don't get them in your subconscious, you're going to obey something else that is going to cause you, going to take you into some painful issues. Amen. Yes, you will. There, there are laws that govern everything. You want a good relationship with a woman. If you're a man and you want a good relationship with your wife, your wife and you want a good relationship. There are principles that govern it. You just have to study, read the books and get it in your subconscious state. Quit, quit running around talking about what the world is talking about, what they wouldn't take and all that. Come on. Quit running around. Feeding off the world. That's what the Bible said. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye renewed by the transforming of your mind. This word renew in the Greek, it means rono, which means to be renovated. When you renovate a house, you take all them old boards off. Because you know why? Because if you don't take all them old boards off and just throw some boards on top of that, it is a very possible chance them old boards going to rot them new boards. That's what's wrong. People have sometimes what you have, I call it stinking thinking. They have rotten and they're, they're rotten and they, they cannot Get away from that old decayed way of thinking. The Bible says, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Y'all see this here? I, I, I did a teaching on the law of thinking. You're going to have to get your mind renewed to a place. And you're going to have to get your subconscious mind in a place that it can make good quality decisions. We talked about the law of decision making. All that's on YouTube. All, all the teachers on YouTube. If you're hearing it, you want to go back, just, just, just go to YouTube. I'm on YouTube. Eddie Tate. You'll see me. You'll see my face. Y'all know me. Amen. Ain't no excuse for you not to get the word. Amen. You can go back to Facebook Live, but you know, just go to YouTube. You'll get all the teaching. Now, one of the things is that when you begin to talk about getting your mind in a state to where it responds to principles, that's what you want. We talked about the law of decision making. You want to get your mind in a state to where it responds to proper information. You, you, to make good decisions, you have to have uh, your mind has to be fortified with good information. And if it's bad information, you're going to make bad decisions. Y'all hear me? If it's good information, your mind, it, your subconscious is filled with good information and, and your conscious and your subconscious is going to make, um, it's, it's going to make decisions. It's going to influence decisions based on what's stored up. So now if it's good or bad, that's where you're going to make the decision. So now it becomes your responsibility to renew your mind. It ain't God's. It ain't your pastor, your mom, or nobody else, prayer partner. It's your responsibility. The Bible said you renew your mind. You renew your mind. And do you know what that history, that, that really was? We could use it of changing our behavior and a lot of things we can use it for the way we think and you know, because every time you do something, you really need a mindset to do it excellent. 
I tell folks all the time, you, you need a mindset to do whatever you're going to do. You need a mindset because when your mind is set, that means then one thing that now the principle is in there and I'm obeying based on, come on, based on the information that's stored. I keep telling y'all, you better quit listening to all these uncles and aunts telling you, talking about putting fear in you and starting in these relationships. You, 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 you men, you better quit letting Uncle Jack tell you don't let no woman know how much money you got. Hide money from your wife. Come on. You, 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 uh, women, you better quit telling, letting Aunt Lula Bell tell you, you better keep a spare, keep a black book, keep a number. Because you don't know what that joker's going to do. You better not allow those things to influence your thinking. Because you must understand what will happen is you'll go into a relationship with fear. And fear always causes failure. Come on, somebody. You won't go in with faith. You will go in with fear. I want you to understand that. You'll go in with fear. Now, I want you to catch this here. You got to understand tonight that he says to guard your heart. Guard. Guard your heart. Keep. Now, the, no, now, what's going to keep it is peace. Now, when I lock into peace, I lock into rest. So when I start to rest, I take time. I start to read books, listen to tapes. Come on. I start looking at programs that's going to benefit me instead of a bunch of foolishness. Because when you're in a state and you need things to happen and you need to be able to do, you're going to have to fortify your mind. You're going to have to get as much information in there and you're going to have to feed your mind through your consciousness where you are right now. So that means I got to read, I got to listen, I got to view, I got to be around the right people, I got to be in the right environments, I got to get away from losers, I got to get away from people full of fear, I got to get away from folks. You know what I'm talking about? See that? See, two broke folks can't help each other. Well, you shouldn't say that, but they can't, it's the truth. You broke, if, if if you broke, another person broke. What can y'all do for each other? You need to get around somebody that's not broke or, or read somebody's book that's not broke and learn how they got out of being broke instead of sitting around listening to that mess that you know, your friend, whoever they is, saying, huh, I tell you, we, we just don't know what we're going to do. Um, you don't need to be hearing stuff like that. When you're in a situation where you need change, you need to be in a position around people that have changed, around people that have more than you have. Do y'all hear me? I'm talking about healing because I'm trying to show you how to keep your mind fortified so that you don't collect a bunch of issues. See that? Poverty. You got to get away from around poverty. Somebody said, but everybody poor around me. I don't care how poor people is around you. You ain't got to have the same mindset. You ain't got to walk your grass down. Come on, let your children right over, right on your wall. You don't have to do that. You can keep your place in the ghetto just as clean because here's the problem. Here's the thing. See, a lot of times you can take a person out of the ghetto, but you can't take it out of them. Because you can take them, transfer them to Beverly Hills. They'll just walk the grass down and tear up the house. Y'all hear me? Hmm. You can... Renovate a whole lot of apartments where people is living that's in tow up. And if you don't get them folks out of there, they're going to tear that new development up. You know why? Because that destruction is still in there. That poverty is still in there. You do good. Oh, yeah, we, we renovating for, we renovating, uh, you know, for everybody. We, 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 we're doing a new thing. We're helping them. No, you're not helping them. Because the problem is they're going to tear up the place again. You know why they're going to tear up the place again? Because of their mindset. You ain't changed their thinking. You know what keep people broke? It's that they thinking ain't changed. They still thinking. They still have bad habits with money. Bad habits with time. Bad habits. Come on here. They still have bad habits. They still have bad habits with resources, relationships, trust issues. Am I right? See, don't trust folk. Oh, yeah, I got hurt the last time. I ain't let nobody get close to me. 
The thing is, you better get in God's presence and get healed. Because God does things through relationships. It's the law of relationship. God does things through relationships. Do y'all hear me? You better get somewhere and so that God can put the right relationships in your life. Come on here. So somebody say, well, you know, they say so-and-so ain't good. That, that so-and-so might not be good for other folks, but so-and-so might be good for you. You see, there might be something in that person that could really help you. Maybe they could help somebody else. Are y'all listening? So now we have to understand that God is, I'm telling y'all something. You really don't know how bad God wants to see you succeed. But see, so many people are just locked into pain. They're locked into it. Pain makes you not want to move. Pain makes you not trust nobody. Pain causes you dysfunction that we're talking about. Healing is necessary. Amen. Now, so many times. I tell I explain to you, <coughs> excuse me, that first night, all the various types of hurt that you could endure, that you could have. That you can have. See, see, pain will cause you disregard something that could really help you. See, pain ain't no joke. See, let me let me share this. See, you got to guard your heart. How do I guard my heart? I guard my heart, number one. I listen to the voices that's talking to me. I listen to the voices that's speaking to me. I could tell by talking to you what you listen to. Come on. That's why I like intelligent conversations. Are y'all hearing me? If I thought I had an interest in a woman, I would, you know, see where it's her state of mind at. You know, beauty, fingernails, and hairstyles, and all that stuff. That 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 that's all right. Outer beauty is fine. I like attractive looking women, but you know what? I like somebody that's got an attractive mindset. Do y'all hear me tonight? An attractive mindset. Let me share this with you, because I'm gonna tell you something. It's too much out there. And so many issues that can get in your heart. If you allow, the Bible says, neither give place to the devil. There is sometimes the devil have a way of trying to slither into your life. And his whole purpose is to cause you pain. Whole purpose is to hurt you. We know the, the word of God said that the that that um Kalasho Tolo Bokosa. That the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's his whole ministry. So at the same token, he'll put people in your life. And he will use them as instruments of destruction. And can I say something to you? He'll put ideas in your head. And become nothing but an instrument of destruction. You all hear me? See, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you tonight. Healing, we need healing. But let me say something: you you need to be healed, and you don't. Need, if you're hurt, you don't need to be in no atmosphere where folk are constantly opening up the wound, constantly opening up the wound. You hurt, and they constantly opening it up. That's why you got to watch the company you keep, the 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 people you be around. You got to watch the atmosphere. You all hear me? Because you're gonna have to protect, guard your heart. Your heart is the, it, let me share something with you, is the very thing that the enemy wants to infiltrate. He wants to get in there so he can cause you issues, so he can cause your behavior to change and make you start doing things you ain't got no business doing. Make you start walling yourself up, not allowing nobody to come in. Y'all hear me right now. He wants to get in 
your subconscious and he wants you this is why it as far as listening to a bunch of negative information over and over and over that's why some of these jobs y'all on some of y'all need to plug your ears up especially if you live in Cuba you can put earbuds in your ear and listen to the word instead of listening to all that negativity I don't know what we gonna do gas so high food so high I tell you we just going and look like the devil taking over no 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 you need to be listening to something that's edifying you, something that's building you up. Are y'all hearing me right now? Something that is ikatolobokosha, that is building you to a place where it's fortifying you with the word, fortifying you with success principles. Listening to those things. That's why I listen to words over and over and over. I'll listen to a preacher over and over and over. If he's talking something good and if it's a message, because sometimes you go back and it's something that you miss. That's why I put these messages on YouTube. So folk can go back and listen to them over and over and over. But most people don't want to do that. I'm here, I want I want to hear something new. You ain't really digested the old thing that you just heard. But you want something new. You know, oh, we need a new revelation. No, you need to take heed to what you heard. See, what faith is, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word. When you don't have, when you got, when you got, uh, the, the, listen, the key to uh, little faith is more word. The key to weak faith is obeying more word. So people tell me all the time, Pastor, I don't think I got enough faith. I said, well, you ain't saved. They said, I'm, I got the Holy Ghost. I say, well, you according to what you just said, you ain't saved. He said, why you say that? Because the Bible said, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus died. That, and it took faith for you to do it. So it's not that you don't have faith. You have faith. You're going to have to either grow it. You're going to have to use it. I am him. You're going to have to get a stronger level of trust for God's word. That's what the Bible said that Abraham was strong in faith. How, so how was Abraham strong in faith? He the father of faith. He was just natural. No, it wasn't natural. He didn't start out strong in faith. The Bible said that he was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. You don't have to be strong in faith. Just give glory. He hoped against hope. Even when it looked like it couldn't happen, he hoped against hope. What that meant was it, when it looked like he couldn't have a son, he kept hoping. He kept looking to the future. He said, look, God, I know what you said. I believe it. That's why I'm moving. He went, he's adjourned to a land. You know what? He hoped against hope when it looked like it could not. That's the same thing you're going to have to do. Quit around and tell me, I'm so discouraged. I don't know what to do. Y'all pray for me. No, you got the hope against hope when it don't look like it can happen. You got the hope against hope. Are y'all hearing me right now? You got to have hope. Expectancy. Even when it looked like it can't happen. My God. Because you, you got to understand that if God declared it, you spoke it, and the Holy Spirit says already done, you're going to have to be to a place to where you receive it, you believe it, you receive it by faith, and you take it there, and you praise God for it every time you think about it. You don't go back and keep asking Him for it. Because if, if, if it's now faith, you got it right now. Oh, all oh, of us tell you, I just don't know. I don't see it. Hmm. I don't see it. I know you don't see it. I, I, I know you don't see it. But it's not about what you see. Are y'all hearing me right now? It's about what God said. It's about you believing God. Come on, somebody. That you received it right then and there. Now, I want you to understand tonight that the enemy is after your faith. Now, you talking about pain. The enemy uses pain as a distraction, as a diversion. Because he's trying to detour, trying to, you know, di di divert you into another direction other than the word of God. You all see that? He's trying to divert you into another direction. He's trying to give you, uh, you take this little detour here, take this little cut. Oh yeah, what you do is just, just going on and uh, get this little piece of thing and, and, and the witch down the block said that you'll have luck, burn this, burn that. It'll bring prosperity out. No, quit trying to take shortcuts because you 
Ababo, Shata, you want right now gratification. You want things right now. Am I talking right? Why do you think folks go and rob stores and steal? Because they want right now gratification. They want stuff right now. They don't want to go out and get a job and work and save money. They rather break in your house and steal your TV. Y'all hear me right now. Because they right, want right now gratification. They don't want to wait on nothing. Come on. And let me say something. That can be one of the very things, weaknesses, proclivities, one of the weaknesses in people because they don't want to wait. And they're too lazy to go out and work for their own stuff. Are y'all hear me right now? So now, one of the things that you, you're going to have to really be careful because that heart is important. We, we, we're we talking about healing. We're trying to, let me say, preventative is better than cure. It's better to be proactive. Fortify your heart. Fortify your mind. Do y'all hear me? It's better to fortify your mind and fortify your heart. Do y'all hear me? They say prevention is better than cure. So if you can be proactive even with your health, like exercise, drink water, uh, uh, eat good food, good green leafy vegetable, eat good food, stop eating cakes and pies and drinking soda and all that stuff that, that, that you get a your kick out of right then and there, but then later on down the line, it causes issues in your body. See that? Self gratification, cause oh yeah, the decay feels so good. Oh, it tastes so good going down. Yeah, it go down. But then it's going to cause issues in the body. I'm not telling you not to eat cake or anything. But I'm just saying some people, it's not good for people to be eating. It's not good for nobody eating a bunch of sugar. Nobody. Nobody eating a whole bunch of sugar. Causes issues in your body. Your arteries all through your body. Causes issues in your bloodstream. Am I right? Too many empty calories going in your body. They ain't nourishing your body. They're storing up and causing problems. Hmm. So now, we have to understand that you pay the price. And there was something you don't want to pay the price for. Come on, somebody. I, I'm just here to let you know tonight that if you're going to have a successful life, and you're going to have a good life, and you're going to have a life free of pain, come on. You got to watch what issues that, that, that your heart is creating. Because... Every day is creating issues. Now you can create good or you can create bad. Tomorrow I, I'm going to talk to more about restoration, restoring because people, because a lot of us don't know how to restore people in love. The Bible says uh, if a brother and if a man be overtaken in the fault, you which are spiritual restore. And I ain't talking about no kind of witchcraft either. I'm talking about you that's filled with the love of God, the nature of God, got patience with people and willing to take time with people and still word in them, spend time with them, help them get well again. You restore such one the spirit of meekness. So likewise, you yourself be tempted. Come on. Uh-huh. Come on, somebody. Oh my God. Let me, let me, let me tell you something tonight. You, you're going to have to understand that God, the Bible says he restores my soul. He restocks my soul. He restores my soul. Restocks my soul. That's what the word restore means. It means to restock. Uh, a store is a place where you go and buy bread, food, whatever. Am I right? But can I share something with you here? Sometimes the products get low in there. And at night, you see what you call the stock people. They have to restock the shelves or restore. Sometime in your life, there's things get low. Your emotions get low. Things get low. But the Bible said he restore my soul. Am I right? That means that he will restore sometimes your health, sometimes different things, and sometimes your strength. Love shot. Sometimes your strength. Am I right? So. He will restore or restock you. Come on. Who am I talking to right now? God will restock you. Restore you. And you know, that's what healing is all about. Healing brings restoration in your body, in your mind, in your emotions. It can bring restoration in your finances. Because, yeah, you get low in finance. You get low and you can't pay your bills. You know, but the good thing about it is that he will restore. 
And he even said he'll give back the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust and caterpillar has eaten up. Anybody hear me right now? In other words, he'll give back the time. He'll restore the time. See, you're thinking, oh, I tell you, I missed that opportunity back in 2015. You don't understand. When you believe him as my God, your shepherd, he restores your soul. He'll re give back the time. It'll be like when, when things hit, it'll be like you never even missed anything. Like the enemy never done nothing. Am I right? He may look at look at Israel in bondage 400 some years. What happened? He restored them in one night. Y'all ain't going to talk. He said, borrow gold from your, your neighbors, the Egyptians. And they left. They were broke, depressed slaves, but they exited being rich millionaires. I wish I had. See, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. It's not about even how you came in or how you got there. It's the way you're going to come out. Can I prophesy right now? It's the way you are coming out. I said it's the way you're coming out. Hola, ma, 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 shakota, la, bosa. He told him, he said, no, Pharaoh's not going to let you go, but surely I'm going to bring you out with a mighty hand. Can I prophesy to somebody right now? God said, it don't matter how long you've been something. He said, but I'm going to bring you out with a mighty hand. I'm going to bring you out with a mighty hand. Come on here. The Bible said that he will have the spirit, Jesus have the spirit of might upon him. The word of God tells us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he said he will strengthen us with might in the inner man. That's why Paul said, I can do all things to God that strengthen me. Strengthen me what? He strengthens me with might. And might is the highest level of the anointing. Might is the highest level of the anointing. Come on here, somebody. It's time to operate in a wave of glory, a place of might. Where you have never operated in. And I don't care how many demons and devils. I don't care what they done done to you. But God's going to bring a healing up on you. Where you'll be whole. Am I talking right? You're not going to make excuses to have pain. You ain't going to let pain. My God, make you go off on folks and have bad attitudes because you're hurting. Come on here. But I am telling you right now, there is a healing right now that is flowing up on the people of God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel katolabo. People done hurt you. They done you wrong. Come on. They 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 like they did the man on the way to Jericho. They they stripped you. They robbed you. They took from you. Left you wounded. But I'm telling you something tonight. I feel a good Samaritan. I feel an anointing coming to give back to you what the devil took from you. My 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 motion that they stripped you. They wound you. My God. But the Bible said that a Samaritan came by. Pour wine in the man's womb, bandage them up, and put them in the end, and say, "Listen, I'm paying this here, <clears throat> and if it's more, I'll come back and pay you." I feel the healing power of God this night right here, and God said, "I'm gonna bandage you up, I'm gonna pour oil, I'm gonna pay pour wine." Or into your wounds. He said, I'm going to make you whole in every aspect and every way. This is your night. My God, for a supernatural manifestation of the glory and of the power of God. I wish I had somebody right now. The power of God is flowing. And I'm telling y'all right now, it is time now that you allow the Holy Spirit to pull that oil, to pull that oil, to pull that anointing up on you. Quit making excuses for carrying that pain. God wants to get that pain out of you so you won't be dysfunctional. Am I talking right? You better get in the presence of God and allow him to pull that oil into your wounds. Pull that oil. I know you've been hurt. <clears throat> I know they hurt you. I know it looked bad. But I prophesy right now that tonight God is pouring oil into your wounds. Come on, talk to me, somebody up in here. There is a pouring tonight of the oil. God said, that's why, son, I want you to sleep on that oil and anoint the oil. Your, the power from your body is going into the oil. And when you get on here, anoint this camp. 
anoint this phone with that oil, he said, and the power is going to flow over the airways. Healing is going to take place. I don't care if it's nerves. I don't care if it's sugar. I don't care if it's diabetes. I don't care if it's a bad back, if it's a bad leg. I, I don't care if it's a tumor somewhere. I decree in the name of Jesus that there is an anointing of healing that is flowing up on you right now. I don't care how bad they hurt you <clears throat> in that last church. I don't care how bad your family hurt you, your ex-husband, your ex-wife hurt you. Come on. And some of y'all, even your kids can hurt you. But I see Kotala I loose an anointing this night over the airways. I loose the glory of God. I loose power. I loose might. I declare in the name of Jesus. Woo. God's going to reward you. See, some of y'all done waited on God. Labosha. Some of y'all like blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says when he heard that Jesus was coming. Some of y'all heard about this anointing. Some of you heard. And he said that when Jesus passing by, he began to cry out. <clears throat> Thou son of David. That's when he declared worship. <clears throat> worship also is to declare the nature of his name. Call the son of David, son of mercy. The king that reigns forever. Hallelujah. And I'm telling y'all tonight over this airway that the king of glory is coming in. The king of glory is exalting you. The king of glory is moving up on your home, moving on your family, moving on your business, moving on your ministry. The king of glory is coming in now. La Bosha, I feel the king of glory. Hmm. The king of glory. Who is this king almighty? Strong in battle. The Lord God strong in battle. The king of glory. Mm. And guess what? He lives on the inside of you. There's many of you right now. You're looking for something to come down at the sky. But God is going to anoint you to stir up what's in you. This kingdom, this power, the king of glory. He lives inside of you. That anointing is there. And the anointing removed the burden and destroyed the yoke. I feel the anointing now. La Bosha. I said I feel the anointing. Come on here somebody. Oh, by my masha. Oh, my God, I feel the king of glory up in here. Whoa, I feel the king of glory. Kito solo moko sha ba ba ba. Whoa, so I'm telling y'all, it is a need for you to get healed of all pain and all dysfunction so that you will not go by making excuses why you're doing the thing, why you're lazy, why you're procrastinating, why you're full of fear. Come on here, somebody. It's time out. For excuse making, lazy people is full of excuses. Am I talking right? It is time now that you do diligence, do what God called you to do. The Bible said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. The lazy people say there's a lion in the street. Proverbs say slugger. <clears throat> but it's not, that's not but a cute word for lazy. Come on. Say there's a lion in the street so it wouldn't go out there. Then he said that the, the, the slugger will not plow by the reason of the cold, so therefore he's going to beg in the harvest. Y'all hear me right now. That's why you got a lot of folk going to beg in the harvest. Am I talking right? Oh, come, come. No, no. You, you had a chance to plow. <clears throat> but you made an excuse. Oh, it's too cold out there. But there was folks out there plowing. You wouldn't get with them. You wouldn't read their books. You wouldn't listen to the seminar. I ain't getting no help. You didn't want to get in their company. You was intimidated to go around them. Just because they had more than you and no more than you. Come on here. You better use all the tools that you can in this season for your business, for your ministry. I'm looking every day. I listen to seminars every day. I read. I do some of everything. You know why? Because I'm constantly trying to enhance myself. I spend a lot of time in God's presence. I spend alone in his presence. Come on. Oh, I spent a lot of time alone in this presence. You know why? Because when I see you, I want to be able to deliver to you what you need. 
And I have to be able to let him get it from him where he's constantly downloading into me, constantly anointing me, constantly smearing himself on me, constantly, la boko, I'm constantly in his presence. Am I right? Okay, I, la boko, Come on, somebody. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I enjoy things. I go bowling. I like the movies. I like, uh, you know, going to concerts and stuff, writing music. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I spend a lot of time <coughs> in his presence. I don't see no wrong with entertainment in the right place. As long as I've spent enough time with God and I've got all the deposits that I need. Trust me, if I ain't got everything I need, you think I'm going to be sitting there watching TV all day? Not me. <clears throat> and if I'm watching TV, it's going to be something that's going to be edifying me. Some kind of seminar that's going to build on me. Helping my mind to change more. Come on, help me to get more ground. Help me to get a more understanding of what I need to do. Yes, I'm not telling you not to watch TV, but I'm telling you what I do. And I do watch TV, but let me share something with you. After everything I've done, things shut down, I've done not to do, yeah, I might watch a program then. But there are some people, they, 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 you know, they just don't do nothing and want God to do everything. Oh, I know God going to do it. I know God going to do it. Sometimes if your mind ain't in the right place, it ain't that God can't do it. It's just that he will hurt you if he do it. Now, I know that sounds crazy. It's not that he can't do it. But it's just that you ain't grown enough for him to do. You asking something great, but you don't have the greatness of growth in you yet. Do y'all hear me? You're going to have to, there's some areas you got to grow up. There's word that's been prophesied to you and it's sitting over your head, but you got to grow into it. I mean, you remember when you buy your kids clothes and sometimes they'd be a little too big or the shoes might be a little too big. And you, you know, they were growing. Next thing you know, you pull the outfit out. Boom, they can fit it. The shoes ain't big no more. Because you said they're going to grow into it. Can I say this here? Sometimes there's two, some prophetic words ain't, they're too big for you right now. <laughs> there are some situations too big right now. You ain't grown enough to be in them. Some people cry, I need a wife, I need a husband. You really ain't, probably ain't grown enough into that. You don't even read books. You don't look at seminars on marriage. You don't do nothing but talking about God going to do it. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. I, I, I know there's something that sometimes people don't want to hear stuff like that. But what are you growing into? You want a business. Are you studying business? you got to grow into it. Because if not, you're going to have a lot, some more pain added to it because you're going to go into another failure. And how many know failure sometimes can bring pain? I wish I had somebody. Failure? Yes, it can. Can cause pain. But one thing I like about failure is the fact that it shows that a person tried. I, I can't stand it when people criticize people that's least trying. They sitting on their behind, ain't doing nothing. But then they'll criticize, she didn't do that right. I wouldn't have did it like that. The problem is you ain't trying to do it, but you're criticizing her. Maybe if she fails, she'll find out what she did wrong. You will never find out because you ain't going to never attempt to do nothing because you're scared of failing. You're scared of how it's going to make you look. Come on. Sometimes failure don't look good, but guess what? You learn lessons through it. You learn what to do and what not to do. And I'm telling y'all right now, don't be a critic sitting on the outside looking in. Learn how to put your hands to stuff. If you fail, so what? Failure is just prosperity turned around. Now you can return the lesson. You can use the lesson now. Come on, talk somebody. You can use the lesson now. Oh, yeah. Now you can use the lesson. Yeah. Failure. I said, ooh, Pop, you shouldn't be talking about no failure. Why not? It's reality. Isn't it a reality? 
Sometimes you wonder why something didn't happen. God, and sometimes God tell you. Remember when I told you to sow that seed and I told you to do the sequence of sowing? Get into the algorithm of sowing constantly. That You know, algorithm is a, a set of laws that's leading up to something. Remember I told you to sow this month, next month, this month, that month. I kept telling you to sow. And now you bugging me, asking me why this or that didn't happen. I'm using that as an example. Or it could be prayer. He said, didn't I tell you to pray at that time every day, simultaneously pray? Didn't I tell you to go on that fast? But you didn't. You kept stuffing them pork chops down your mouth. Did, did, didn't I tell you? Mm -hmm. I told you to do things, but you didn't do it. And now you're mad at me? And you even blaming the devil? But actually, the devil really is doing no more than what you licensed him to do. If he's hindering you, it's because a lot of cases, you have licensed the devil. Uh-oh, I, I know you don't want to hear that. You have licensed or give the devil a license give you permission like driving a car a license give you permission to drive a car even if you own one and you ain't got no license you ain't got no permission you get caught you get a ticket am i right uh-oh citations how many y'all ain't got citations from god uh-oh citation something you gotta pay i want y'all to kiss this here tonight I want you to understand something. God is a practical God. And I always tell people, if you ain't practicing dealing with a hundred dollars a week, you are not going to deal with a thousand. You can't pay tithe, you can't save, and you can't invest ten dollars or whatever, five dollars. Invest what you save. Get a brokerage account. Give it that number five dollars, put it over there. Buy some dollar stocks or something. Get the rhythm going. See, quit sitting up blaming the devil. Oh, see, the devil got in my way. No, in some cases. Now, I'm going to tell you when the devil bring and brings a hindrance. When the devil comes in is when you've been doing everything that you're supposed to do. Then that's the time. When you know the Bible said that they haven't done all to do to stand, stand there for you've done everything. You done tired, you done prayed, you done fast, you did everything God took you. But then he comes in. We we know that that's a demonic hindrance, and we know that in a matter of time, it's gonna be removed by God Himself. Okay? God gonna tell you what to do, boom, it's out the way. But then don't you license the devil. The Bible says neither give place to the devil. When you license the devil, you're giving him place to operate and sit there. Amen. Mm. And then some of these habits that's got on your mind, it's got your mind programmed to where, you, where you're ignoring the laws of success. And you're still mad at God when God don't move, but you're ignoring the law of sowing and reaping. You're ignoring the law of faith. You, you, you are ignoring the law of the word. You you won't keep the word in your mouth. You keep everything in your mouth but the word. The law of the word of God. Am I right? It is written, man shall not live by every word that that but it, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what's supposed to be proceeding out your mouth going forth. You need to send that word before you go anywhere. Y'all ain't gonna talk right now. You you supposed to be sending that word out. The Bible said his word will not go out void, but it will accomplish that which he sent it out to do. What are you sending the word out? Am I right? You could send it to. You may just like God, right? You could send the word like Jesus did. Sent the word to the man that was hit, that was sick. And the Bible said the man, by the time he got home the next day, the man was healed. And the man asked, said, when did he start repairing? He said, the, 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 the people said, it was about this time yesterday. It was about that time, 24 hours away, Jesus spoke the word and told the man, go your way. Your servant is healed. And he started repairing at the same hour that Jesus spoke. What are you sending out? What are you saying? You talking about pain? Stop hurting you? 
Come on. You better quit discussing words and putting words out. Oh, I'm just hurting so bad. I don't know what to do. I'm going through so much. You better be raised up. If the Lord said I'm healed, I'm healed by his stripes. Oh, but brother, tell you, I still got symptoms. I don't care what you got. I know what the words say. By his stripes, I was healed. Oh, but I got all these bills. The word said he can do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask or think. The word said, Proverbs 22, he said that the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and he adds no sorrow with it. That's what the word say. You better quit talking about what circumstance say. Oh, I'm telling you, they, they, boy, whoo. I don't know, but I'm, I'm so far down. I'm buried in debt. I'm buried. Come on here, man. I don't care what you think got you buried. La Bosha. My God, I wish I had somebody right now. I don't care what's hurting you. I don't care what you think got you buried. How many witches? Oh, they, they took counsel. They praying against me. I need you to pray right now. You better raise up in the word of God. Tell them spirits. La Bosha. God has given me power against you. Against unclean spirits. <coughs> I have authority over you. And whatever I tell you to do, you have to do. I don't care if miss whoever sent you down here. I'm sending you back up there to heart. I ain't, you ain't say I ain't getting no help. I'm sending you back up there to heart. Because I got authority. And whatever I bound on earth will be bound in heaven. What I consider to be lawful, unlawful on earth will become unlawful in heaven. Because I got heaven in me too. I'm connected. Oh, I wish I had somebody right now. I'm connected to the Father. I got the Holy Spirit, the mediator in me. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking. I got the Holy Spirit, the mediator in me. And I'm telling y'all right now, God, you are connected. You have authority and power and strength. I want y'all to catch this here. See, I get on here. I, I minister to y'all prophetically, but I teach. And God told me, he said, I want you to get on that YouTube. I want you to get on Facebook Live, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. And I want you to teach. My people lack understanding. I want you to teach my word. So to see the word in their hearts and minds so they can grow. Come on. You're like a garden. And whatever's planted inside of you will grow. Uh-oh. I said it. Whatever's planted in you will grow. That's why some of y'all got issues right now. I keep telling you, you better watch what's growing out your life. You better watch what issues in you. And now those seeds are harvesting, bringing forth fruit, but some of the fruit that's coming forth, you don't want it because you allowed the wrong thing to be planted in your garden. Y'all ain't going to talk right now. That's why the word needs to be planted. Seeds of the word, prosperity, healing, deliverance, faith, sacrifice. The seed of the word need to be planted in you so it can bring forth fruit. After its own time. See I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I'm telling y'all tonight. You better watch what's being planted in you. Sitting up in some of these old negative churches. Talking about healing and past. Healing ain't for the people of God no more. Tongues is of the devil. Come on you better come up out that cemetery. Get somewhere where the fire is falling. Get somewhere where the anointing is falling. Get somewhere where the glory is falling. Oh my God, I wish I had somebody right now. Get somewhere where the anointing is falling. Mm. The power is falling. Glow shall I by my masa. Oh God, I thank you. How many of y'all feel me tonight? You feel what I'm teaching you tonight? Watch what's being planted in your garden, your heart. Because out of it will flow the issue.
it will bring forth a harvest. It will bring forth evil seeds, seed that you don't want. It'll bring you into a place of impatience, a place where you can't wait on God. It'll bring you into a place of hatred. It'll bring you into a place of lust. Y'all ain't going to talk right now. Some of you women and men, you better watch the seeds that these folks planting in you. Oh, yeah, you look so good. You, you, you. And, and a lot of times, it's not a genuine compliment. Sometimes it is a seed of lust. Ain't nothing wrong with somebody telling you how nice you look. Nothing wrong with that. But you got to be able to discern what kind of seed is it. Is it a seed that's just going to really enhance me and make me feel better about myself? Or is it a seed that, that's planted there to make me start feeling something for you? Oh, shit, y'all ain't going to talk. Is it a seed planted there to generate lust in me? You got to watch what's being planted. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm very careful about what people plant in me. What they do, if you come to me, that's fine. Don't keep running me down with something because then I start getting suspicious of you. Am I talking right? Because I think now you're trying to seduce me. And sometimes men seduce women with compliments. Every time, every time they see you, whoo, girl, you looking good. Now, like I said, it's nothing wrong with a compliment. But you ain't got to tell me how good I look every time you see me. See y'all, I'm talking. Men is good for planting seeds in women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of them ain't genuine compliments. Mm-mm. -mm. You know, I'm serious. A lot of them, they plant nasty compliments. They look at your behind. Oh, girl, what you growing back there? And if you ain't had folks to say good things to you and stuff, them seeds will start to get planted. Oh, he do like the way I'm built. Come on here. He ain't planting nothing about your mind. He just focuses on your behind. He ain't thinking nothing about how smart you is. I wish I had somebody. He ain't thinking about how intelligent you are. How creative you are. He just looking at your behind. And you know what else is on his mind? Uh-oh. Oh, God help me right now. Women do the same thing. They have lustful compliments. But I'm trying to show you tonight, don't let people plant. Some things you got to brush right off. Oh, no. She keep telling me that. Nope. Brush it off. Just brush it off. Am I right? Because they're trying to plant seeds. It happened to me all the time. They're always trying to plant seeds and lustful seeds, and I know it be. But you know what? The Bible says to guard your heart. From out of it flows the issues of life. You better guard your heart. Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? See, you, you, you got to understand that, that you, you have to guard. It's your responsibility to guard. See, I don't got bad you feeling. Don't you be letting folks plant the wrong thoughts and long, wrong things in you. Because they will develop into a harvest. For the Bible said when a man is drawn away, he's drawn away by his own lust. Remember this here. God allowed faith to be tested, but the devil tests flesh. You don't want a bunch of stuff in you. Then the devil throw a, a flesh test up on you. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Then next thing you fail. And next thing you know, oh, you can come on over. We can just talk. No. You have to be able to watch what's being planted in your garden. You are a garden. You're a garden. Let the seed of the word get planted. Let confidence get planted in you. And if there's a person that genuinely gives you compliments, have enough discernment to know if it's a genuine compliment. Am I talking right? This ain't somebody just trying to get you in the bed or get, get you somewhere. 
give you enough of them and get, you know, the, let, let it grow. And next, you know, that lust growing up in you. No, I'm telling you, watch your heart. Watch what's being planted. You are a garden. Yeah, God will put good people around you, give you genuine compliments. And you will know when it's a genuine compliment. There's no agenda behind it. You're not nasty about it. Are y'all hearing me? Genuinely. And God's going to put, I prophesy God will put genuine people around you. Come on. People that has your best interest in heart that will not cause you a bunch of pain. People that will not cause you a bunch of pain. Sometimes we've all been victim of it. We fell into it. Well, people have caused us pain. Yes, we have. I, I, I prophesied tonight that God is moving in your life and he's healing you of all dysfunction, all pain. I speak it tonight. Father, I thank you for the anointing upon all the people of God tonight. Let the anointing of healing begin to flow upon everybody because of what the issue is. If there is a seed that's been planted, we dig it up, pull it up out of them. And we command the seed of the word of God to be planted in them. We command them to flourish in the things of God. We command them to flourish in the laws of success, prosperity. I, I lose healing. Even those that are listening to me on YouTube that has been going through all type of stuff. I lose the anointing of healing upon them right now. From the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet. I don't care what kind of failure they've had. I don't care what kind of failure they've had. My God, I lose success right now. Let them turn that failure around. Let them turn it into success. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. God's good, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Pastor Margaret, I speak blessings on you. And I command every seed of the enemy. Anything that tried to derail your purpose in life. And even when they laughed at you. They had planted a seed for some years. But guess to, guess to see who's here. You're still here. And you are still going to be the Joseph of your family. God's going to use you. And I'm, I tell you, God's still going to use you down south. That Them, them doors going to open up. You're going to go, go down there to minister to people. You're going to go down there, but you want any time. You ain't going down there for no vacation. You're going down there to work. God's going to send you down there with power. A lot of folk going to get set free. Your nieces, your nephew, people going to get set free. Old people you knew. And if it had to happen inside of a house. Your name is going to get out down there. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Because the seed of the word is in your heart. And it's planted in you. And it's flourishing. It's a season for it to grow like never before. Glory to God. Yes, Lord God. Anita, God told me to tell you tonight he's fixed it. And I hear God said he's planting new things in you every day, new ideas. And God said they're going to flourish. And God said, even the, the pain you went through with your ex, the Lord said that I'm totally closing the gap on that. And those issues will not bother you. And I hear God said, I know you're still con you're concerned about things. But the Lord said, daughter, you get ready because I am going to give you the victory this night. And even with your family, can you tell me your kids, you, God's raising you up as well. Raising you up. We'll see. Business in every way. But God said good seeds are being planted in you now. You're going to reap re a great harvest. Glory to God. Everyone online tonight. Those that can at least sow a $21 seed. But those that can sow $100. And if have you got to do a pledge or whatever. Sow $100 on this week here. Uh huh. God told me to just put it out there. And he'll touch the hearts of who have to do it. And do not be like the slugger to say there's a lion in the street. Don't make an excuse why you can't give it. Because if it's something you wanted bad enough, you take that same $100 and you sacrifice to get it. 
See, but you got to make God just as important as whatever it is to you that you prioritize. You got to prioritize him. Listen, this is a special anointing that when I come on here and you have to take advantage and sow into it. Even you watching by YouTube. That cash app is right down there in the description. Mm -hmm. It's right down there in the description. Yes, sir. And let me share something with you. You have to get to a place to where you prioritize God. Mm -hmm. I'm telling tell y'all. Don't come on and get common with me. Don't get familiar. If the Spirit of God tells you to sow, you sow. I understand if he don't. But I'm telling you, he told me he's going to speak to people of sowing that seed of $100. Amen. And like I said, I ain't going to do like I'm not, I'm not going to pull teeth for it to happen. I'm going to speak it, tell you, and move on from it. Amen. And all of y'all tonight, they can sow at least $21. Do it tonight. If you can sow at least $21 tonight, do it. Or if you got $11, whatever, $10, whatever. But all those that can sow at least $21, do it. And if God's speaking to you to do it, do it. You might need it for something else, but God says, sow it, sow it. I've done it many times. Thank you. Glory to God. Sister Dina, the Lord God is moving for you. I told you, keep you getting closer and closer. God told me to tell you every seed that you plant toward that house. God said you're getting closer. See, the devil cannot stop the laws of the spirit. I want you to know that. He can't stop it. See, that's the reason why he get people not to obey the laws of the kingdom. Because then he know he can hinder them. But if you obey the laws of the kingdom. I'm obeying the law right now called the law of obedience. He know when I obey God, God moves for me. It's a law of obedience. He'll do the same thing for you. But he know he can get you in disobedience. That's why I tell many of you. He can get you in disobedience and get you in fear. Ooh, if I give that, I ain't going to have nothing. You better get to the point where you tell the devil, it's plenty more where that came from. You got to believe this thing, y'all. Now you got to believe it. All this quoting, you got to believe it now. Till you execute it and move out in it. Glory to God. Yes, yeah, so Sister Dana, things are close. But he said, keep sowing your seed. Don't let the devil, people, and nothing talk you out of it. So if it's little. Remember I told you about sowing uh, the law of sowing um, constantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So you do it. Chanta, my niece. Why do I hear furniture? Why do I hear new furniture? Why do I hear new furniture? Why do I hear new furniture? Mm. I hear new furniture. All right, cuz. Why I hear new furniture? New furniture must be for a new house. There's something that God is doing, Chanta, that will not be able to be stopped. Yeah, I know you've been through some challenges since I seen you when we was up in Orlando. You know. But I'm going to tell you something. There is something big getting ready to happen for you. And there's some kind of business that sideline business you're going to start. And God said you're going to make some money. Some good money at doing it. Oh yeah, in Jesus name. Oh yeah. Amen. Woo, glory. He to so long on my side. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Yvette, there are doors that are opening that the enemy cannot stop. Yvette, I heard God saying, get ready, closer, 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 closer. Something big is about to break in the financial realm, real big. And I'm telling you, it ain't you, you just keep doing what you're doing. God got you sowing like that for a reason. He said, because 
That's the law of generosity. And God getting ready to be so generous to you. You're going to see. And even with Craig, there's new developments and there's new things that God is doing. So don't worry about it. I know you're not, but there's new developments coming on with Craig. I hear mercy. I hear justice. Ah, I hear God saying, get ready. You're going to see. Told you the family business must get on the way. You are a family of millionaires. Glow by my mama, shot by my son. <coughs> You'll be able to build whatever kind of house you want. Whatever kind of house. Glow by my mama, shot. Mm, glory to God. Yes. Tanya. Tanya where? Tanya, the Lord is moving like never before. And Tanya, doors are opening. And I hear thing God saying, Tanya, that don't worry about the circumstances. Don't worry about how things went on last week and even last month. I'm about to move in a very extravagant way. In a way that Liko Soba Masha, in a way that the enemy will not be able to keep up with you no more. But I'm speeding things. I'm accelerating things. And I'm moving you into the next level, next place, said the Lord. And God said, be careful of the people that you're around and you're talking to. Stay away from small-minded folks, Tanya. Stay away from small-minded people. Oh, that's it. Your environmental change. God says, time for an environmental change. Yes, uh-huh. Because everybody say love you, don't love you. And they'll see jealousy around you. But God said, beware of your surroundings. Thank you, Lord. Surreal. The Lord told me to tell you, he said, get ready. It's coming. It's coming fast, too. Yes, it's coming fast. Sometimes that the Lord bore my shot by my side. That Cycles that has been vicious in the past. Sharia, God is about to break and destroy the cycle. Yes, he is. He's destroying the cycle. I said he's destroying the cycle. And nothing shall be impossible. There's a cycle he said he's destroying, Sharia. And a lot of it got to do with poverty. And the struggle that you've been in, you're not going to be in, he said, but you're going to have to believe me and trust me. Not just say you trust me. You got to trust me with what you got. You got to trust me on every level. When I tell you to do it, I tell you to sow, I tell you to pray, I tell you, you have to trust me, Dora, he said. See, God is not in the business of feeling sorry for people. He'll put a little bit in your way and see will you obey with a little bit. Because you know if you don't obey with a little bit, you're not going to obey with a lot. And so real, I see cycles being broken, destroyed, but you have to be obedient. And God said, I know there's a struggle, there's a strain that you've been going through. Don't even discuss your giving with nobody. Whether you give to my ministry or anybody, don't discuss that with nobody. You just do it. So that's what's wrong with a lot of people. They, they begin to ask opinions of people. Do you think that God? No, man. Just do what God tells you to do. Don't be discussing it with, with nobody. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You know what you're going through, what you're dealing with. And that's the devil giving you logic. Hmm. Do y'all hear me? Hmm. Mm -mm. Thank you. Everyone tonight, you can sow a seed, sow one, sow something, sow whatever you can sow. I'm give it five dollars. Just, just show God something. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just show God something. Just show Him something. If you can, if you don't, got it. We understand. Don't worry about it. But if you got something, show, show God something. Show Him that you can sow something. It's ten dollars. I don't care. I don't know what it is. Five dollars. Show Him something. I don't, my cousin, you know, sometimes I have men sold a dollar eighty four cent. I mean, he says, that's all I got. I say that's fine. That's all God wanted. All you got. If that's all you can do, 
Show God something. Don't get on here with excuses. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Boy, I tell y'all. I tell you that I see you and God told me to tell you. You just keep doing it and it is. Whew, this fall going to yield some good things for you. Your product life. Your businesses. Everything else. Glow by my shot. Everything. I feel flourished, man, in your product line. And I see you selling more stuff than you've ever sold before. That's what them seeds are doing. You're hitting your business. And every ounce of witchcraft, anything trying to block the movement of the Bahamas, your seeds is moving it out the way back. Mm. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory by my, my, my shot. Glory. Mm. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Mm. Glow by my, my shot. Nish, are you on the line, Nish Grace? Are you on the line? Are you on the line, Nish? Glory to God. I just see where you said you sold something. I don't, I don't see you. But Nish, if you're on the line, God is moving in a mighty way. I feel breakthrough. Breakthrough. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 breakthrough. Yes, and sometimes I leave words on people that's going, I know they're going to watch the um, program afterwards. God sometimes allow me to leave words for people that I see that constantly watch the program, but they don't necessarily be on right now, but they'll go back and watch when they get the time. And a lot of times I, I leave words on there for them because I know they're going to watch it. So there's some of y'all out there, God might allow me to leave a word. When I see that you're constantly watching and viewing, you know, supporting the broadcast, and if sometimes you might not be able to get on, you know, but I'm, I'm telling y'all tonight, Lobo, Shakata da Lobo Kosa. Mm. You know, I always, I got a friend named Paul Watkins. He always watched. That's one of my homeboys. And Paul, if you see this here and you watch it to this far, God told me to tell you he's shifting things in your life. Your career is going to take off. That's something with music. And I know you've always been a dynamic singer, Paul. So we was kids. But I see something big, bigger deals with music, the way you're going to make more money singing. God, God put that gift in you to sing like that. And God said, you, there's a way that you're going to start making money with singing, even at a greater capacity. And I see you getting paid more money, lots of money for singing. Yes. And, and, and God is drawing you spiritually and you understand the word. You know your word. I know Mr. Watkins was a minister. So um, you know the word. But God told me to tell you that the word is coming alive in you like never before. And God's going to bless you. It doesn't matter if you sing in blues, R&B, gospel, what? I sing all of it. I'm an apostle. I'm a man of God. I sing all of it. Any platform that opens up, I can sing on, I'll sing. I don't care where it's at. I'll sing. Because I'm anointed, just like you anointed. And that anointing goes out in the audience and touch people without you even saying the name of Jesus. So I'm telling you, Paul, get ready. Because you're getting ready to go into a greater place. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God, I bless your name right now. Oh, glory. Hato tole me kesa ba masha. Mm, mm, God is good. Everyone tonight, you know, you just sow whatever you sow, so I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel a breakthrough anointing. And God said that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard the things that he has in store for them that love him and wait upon him. I can just sense a breakthrough like never before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God is moving on your families. He's moving in your businesses. He's moving right now. 
He said he'll bless the work of your hands. And you're going to be so healed that pain is not going to hold you back no more. Pain is not going to hold you back. And I had to teach that tonight. Dysfunction and pain, a lack of healing, none of it is going to hold you back. Oh, I declare in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, I do. Amen. I declare right now. Yes, Lord. You will not be held back by pain. Hmm. I feel breakthrough right now. Father, I thank you for breakthrough for the people of God right now. And I loose the anointing around them now. I command them to rise up in a healing where they've never been before. Healing in their family. Healing in their family. Healing in their bodies. I loose that anointing. There's somebody in your left eye. It's like your left eye is irritated. Yes. Let me, let me just anoint this camera for a minute. I feel healing getting ready to go through this. Uh, getting ready to go through this here uh, phone. Yes. There's somebody right now. There's healing in somebody's left eye. I command the fire of the Holy Ghost now to flow in that left eye. Healing, that irritation I see, I command right now. Oh, there it is. In Jesus' name, heal right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. And somebody in their right knee, I command healing in your right knee. La toko saba makata dodo lobo kosha. Mm-hmm. There's somebody been having this pain in their side, right on the right side, but it can move around in your body. It's a woman. Right down in your near your organs, your female organs, where I lose healing now. If you put your hands on your phone, you're holding your phone, I command you healed in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Whoo, kababa. Feet are being healed. Nerves are being healed. Mm. Somebody been having a a pressure is on the right side of their head, but I command that pressure to leave now. Sometimes it can result to a headache, but I command in Jesus' name that that leave you. There it is. In Jesus' name. There it is. Amen. Koto solo bo momo Mmm. Glory to God. Someone has irritated bowels. Mm -hmm. Irritated bowels. I command bloating. I command, yes, the irritated in your bowels, in your small intestines, and even in your life. I command that irritation in your bowel, your gastro tract now, to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I command now all bloating, everything leave, but I command that the lobo digestive juices will come in and do what they're supposed to do and they be strengthened even. There it is. In Jesus' name, I command healing now to flow. Blow by my shabba to go my Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you right now. Ooh. Whew, glory. Creative ideas. Creative ideas. Now the flow. Creative ideas. The flow. Creative ideas. The flow in the people of God to create wealth. In the name of Jesus. Kingdom wealth be created now. There it is. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, people of God, time is getting away, and I tell y'all, I'll be back tomorrow. The Lord say the same. The anointing is moving. Remember, all you that can sow, so even you on YouTube that might be watching me, dollar sign, 21 apostle, cash out. Uh-huh. Just tell me when you put it, when you, if you from YouTube, you sow, you just put it about not recognize you, you just put from YouTube. Because I want to see the support that many of y'all Put right comments on there. Tell me how you enjoyed the thing. Amen. 
Now, if you start writing crazy stuff, I will block your comments. All right? But I just want to know that I'm blessing people, that I'm doing what God told me to do for us, putting that word out there, sowing that word into the people of God. And to all those that were here, even, you know, I want to see people get saved because of this. And this was a serious issue. That's why a lot of people are not saved because of pain, dysfunction and pain. That's why they got a lot of diseases in their body. Because of all emotional issues and stuff. They can't forgive, can't let go and stuff. It's eating them up. I'm going to teach on that too. Amen. That's one of the biggest dysfunctions that we can deal with is unforgiveness. So until tomorrow, y'all, I love y'all and I appreciate each one of y'all. Everything that you give, everything you do to help me in the ministry, I appreciate you. All right. God bless y'all and I love you. Remember, sow your seed. Amen.